I think there's so many people that know for a fact that osteoporosis is merely lacking calcium in your bone. But the problem with that viewpoint is when you start taking calcium, you will make your bones slightly more dense, but you do not decrease your risk of getting fractures. So taking calcium is not only not the answer, but it can make things worse. One of the challenges with osteoporosis is there's really no symptoms, but you do have an increased risk of getting a fracture. And the problem is if you're older and you fracture your hip, boy, the recovery from that is just devastating. Most people that fracture their hip do not live past a year after the fracture. So it's not a good prognosis. The problem with taking calcium is it actually increases your risk of getting a fracture. Interesting. I mean, if you think about it, one of the biggest, best predictors of a myocardial infarction, heart attack, is having a high CAC score, which stands for coronary artery calcification score. It's the calcium in your coronary artery that predicts heart attacks. And so by dumping more calcium into your body, um, you're just going to worsen the situation. Calcium is very unique in that you, we definitely need it, but we really need to get it from our diet primarily. We shouldn't be getting it from a supplement, at least a lot of it, especially what's recommended. I think it's like a thousand milligrams per day. That's like way, way too much because our body does not get rid of calcium very easily. And that also goes with other minerals like iron, for example, whereas potassium is easily excreted if we have too much, but certain minerals do not exit the body very easily. So if you're dumping all this calcium in the tissues, you can end up with excess calcium. And if you think about it, as people age, they tend to calcify, don't they? Their joints start filling up with calcium, their arteries fill up with calcium. Uh, they have all sorts of um, spurring in their, in their back. But here are some problems with too much calcium. Arrhythmias, increase your risk for getting a stroke, heart attack, high blood pressure because the arteries become calcified. And there's no elasticity. You get soft tissue calcium, not just calcium in the arteries, but calcium in the joints and the other tissues of the body, not to mention excessive amount of calcium in your kidneys as a kidney stone. Other symptoms would be constipation, depression, psychosis, arthritis, tendonitis, bursitis, and even abdominal pain. So too much calcium is not good. We need sufficient calcium, but we don't need too much. Some of the real causes of osteoporosis include being on steroids, right? Corticosteroid hormones, or having too much cortisol in your body from some reason. Let's say, for example, you have a tumor in your adrenal gland that's pumping out too much cortisol. Then you develop a condition called Cushing syndrome where osteoporosis is one symptom of that. Also, lower amount of estrogen. So let's say you're going through menopause or you had your ovaries removed, that can lead to osteoporosis. You need a good amount of estrogen to prevent osteoporosis. And this is why women tend to get more osteoporosis than men. Taking too much phosphoric acid from soft drinks, right? Sodas, that will do it. Not having enough vitamin D. This is really, really, really a big one right here. So by not only taking vitamin D, you can absorb more calcium from food, but vitamin D also works with vitamin K2, another key vitamin to help calcium go in the right place. If you don't have sufficient vitamin D, then you really only absorb about 10% of the calcium from your food. So vitamin D uh, doesn't have all these other side effects like calcium does. Malnutrition can also cause osteoporosis. Let's say you're deficient in the trace minerals or amino acids, things like that. That could be a problem. If you're on PPIs because you have heartburn or GERD, um, you're removing the stomach acid, which then really blocks your ability to absorb all minerals. And so since bone is composed not just of calcium, but minerals and also phosphorus and a lot of other things, including protein, PPIs can really create a problem. Gastric bypass can be a risk factor as well as malabsorption where you don't have a healthy lining of the colon to be able to absorb certain nutrients, then you could be at risk of osteoporosis. Here's the solution, okay? Number one, get your calcium from food. I would say the best source getting bioavailable calcium would be raw milk cheese, okay? If you can get some of that, that would be the ideal situation. Um, 
Also leafy greens would do it. Uh, sardines, fish, uh, nuts all have calcium. Increase your vitamin D to at least 20,000 IUs per day. And don't forget about K2 because you always need these together. Very, very important. I would recommend if you're going to take 20,000 international units of vitamin D, then you need 200 micrograms of this K2 together. All right, vitamin C, very, very important in bone health. Okay, you need vitamin C for collagen, which is a type of protein in bone. Bone is not just minerals, it's part protein. And vitamin C is a key factor. If you don't have enough vitamin C, you're not gonna be able to build bone. In fact, people that have a subclinical uh, vitamin C deficiency, like a borderline scurvy situation, their bones are always osteoporotic. Trace minerals, very, very important in activating the protein in your bone, as well as being a part of the bone. And so a good trace mineral product would be essential for bone. And I want to back up to vitamin C. Make sure you take a food-based vitamin C, not a synthetic version of vitamin C. Adequate quality protein is also important. So if you're getting your protein from uh, just like peanut butter or, for example, some soy protein powder or something like that, that would not be a good source of protein. Eggs are the best source. Seafood, shellfish, fish, meat, all high quality protein. Betaine hydrochloride is another thing I would recommend if you have osteopenia or osteoporosis because that fixes the lack of stomach acid that's probably creating all the symptoms for acid reflux. So betaine hydrochloride, especially as you're getting older, is important to start absorbing these minerals as well as breaking down the protein that's needed to form bone. On that note, I think the next most important video to watch would be the one on vitamin K2. Check it out. I put it right here.